Well, the time is finally here. 13 Sentinels is no longer a PlayStation 4 exclusive and is now on the Nintendo Switch. Thanks to porting efforts by Atlas and, of course, Vanillaware, the game is on a whole new platform and a whole new audience has a chance to experience this in incredibly interesting game. Now, some of you may know Vanillaware from their titles like Grim Grimoire, Odin Sphere, Dragon's Crown, Muramasa, but 13 Sentinels is a very, very different game. It is a amalgamation of various different things. It is a love letter to sci-fi, to mechas, to various different gaming genres. It has its one part adventure game, another part tower defense, real time strategy, melded into a very, very interesting package. And when I played it for review back in 2020 on PlayStation 4, I really, really liked the game, but one thing that definitely stood out to me was this was not a game I wanted to play on my TV. I enjoyed playing it on my PS4, no problem, and it looks great even on PS5 with backwards compatibility, but even with all of that said, I would rather have laid down and played this on my Vita with Remote Play. Now, Remote Play is not going to be everyone's cup of tea, and that definitely means you have to be tied to a pretty decent internet connection. But thanks to the Nintendo Switch version now, this is easily, hands down, the definitive way to play this title. 13 Sentinels, it just works on so many different levels in terms of portability, pick up and play, very friendly to sink 10 minutes into or maybe 5 hours into. It's one of those games that even though it is gorgeous, Gorgeous and looks great whether it be docked or in handheld mode, I think having that portability and being able to choose at a moment's notice without having to get a device, hook it up to the internet, it's nice to have that flexibility and the Switch really feels like it's the home that this game needed, which is funny because it was originally designed to be a PlayStation Vita game and a PS4, but since that port never really got off the ground and the PS4 one had to be the only version two years ago, it's nice that the Switch can keep that dream alive. Now, something I want to put out there is a couple of interesting things. This is not going to be as in-depth as my review as the PlayStation 4 version. That is a very spoiler-filled review that you can still enjoy after you beat this game on Switch or PS4, but this is definitely coming at a very interesting perspective for me of I beat this game, I platinumed it back in 2020, and I'm gonna be honest, I actually had very little interest in replaying this game. Now, I wanted to check out the port on Switch, and thanks to a review code by Atlas West, I was able to check it out and really run it through its paces, check out Destruction Mode, go through Adventure, really kind of see what the technical chops were and was very pleased that there are no noticeable differences. Everything I was experiencing was really, really nice, but also that being said, there was nothing new added to this that really enticed me or made me want to do a complete playthrough again. Now, there are exclusive features, like they did add a couple of new attacks for each Sentinel, and while those are nice to have, it never really felt that crazy because, like with attack mode in general, you're not seeing these attack animations live and in person. It's just a lot of little pixel representations of any enemies fighting your characters, it's not like a Fire Emblem where it's zooming into the attack and showing you blasting millions of robots, it's just lots of pixels blowing up over this map. So while the new attacks are nice, they're also not anything that you're going to be writing home about. They're more fun for me, hey, if you really like destruction mode and want to have something new to level up and something to change your repertoire with all of the enemies and the people you fight with, then it's nice, but it's not something you're going to be seeing on the back of the box. It's not selling anyone on there because, oh look, this character now has two new attacks. It's cool that it's there, but it's a very undermined feature and not anything to like freak out about. So one of the things I noticed when I was mostly going through the prologue, but then also making my way through the first 10 or so hours of the game, was I loved the story of 13 Sentinels, even though I did have a couple of gripes with it and the few little things I wished the story had focused on more. Going back to it, though, I felt like all of the air was taken out of it for me. So what's really interesting is... If you are remotely interested in this game, I cannot recommend it enough. It's really interesting. It's a really fun game. It's a really interesting story. The characters are great. The voice acting is awesome for Japanese and English. The music is awesome. But there's two little caveats. One, if you are not sure you like this game or not, there's not an easy way for you to check this out. Unfortunately, the West is kind of on timeout, so Atlas and Sega are not allowed to put demos out. So there's no Western demo for this. But if you can jump through some hoops and jump jump on the Japanese eShop, there is a demo there which will let you play through the prologue. That prologue gives you a very good taste of what the full game is going to be like, because not everyone is going to be into a very slow, methodical story, 
It's very intentional in terms of its pacing, but that's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. The gameplay, while not challenging, is also not going to be everyone's kind of flavor. This is definitely a game I think most people can agree on, is that you come for the characters, the story, the art, and you put up with the gameplay. The gameplay is fine, it's never insulting, but it's nothing you're ever bragging about. There's no like, oh my god, I can't believe this just happened moment when you're in the battles. A lot of those are just kind of turn your brain off, d defeat all the enemies, rinse and repeat for multiple waves. So if you're a new person in this and you want to try this, unfortunately you have to jump through some hoops to try the demo, but it is at least out there if you are not sure if this kind of gameplay is for you just based off looking at videos or trailers, which considering there's not a lot of games out there like this, I can understand. I'm glad Vanillaware was able to put a demo out on PlayStation and Switch in Japan. Not having one out for the West always really seemed dumb, but hey, the demo situation, that's out of their hands. If they're not allowed to do it, that's on them. Now, for people who are coming back to this like me, if you played this on PlayStation 4 and you're thinking, oh, right, I'm ready to jump back into the world of 13 Sentinels, my question for you probably is why, and not in a what's wrong with you kind of way, but more so in a this was a story to me that going back to the second time, there was nothing motivating me. I knew the outcome of all of these characters, their initial questions they're asking in the beginning and throughout the whole story, I know those answers. Those plot twists don't mean anything to me because... While this story does have multiple paths and multiple ways to get to the end of the story, you're going to experience everyone's story the same way. It just depends on what order you want to pick those story paths. So I was very much not motivated to go through the story again. I think it is 100% worth seeing for the first time. I would just say if you're someone who played this before and thinks, oh, I'm going to jump back in and enjoy it just as much, I know I'm probably in the minority, but I at least want to say for me, Jumping back into the story for a second time, I was very uninterested. To be fair, there are so many games to play right now that are new and that I have not experienced. But for me, a story game like this, an adventure game that is this heavy and this focused on the narrative, it's one of those things that's kind of like a one and done for me if I really loved my time, but I'm not going through Telltale adventure games over and over. When I do my one playthrough of The Walking Dead or Tales from the Borderlands, I'm playing through that once. There's other ways I can even mess around with those, and those probably have more replay value than 13 Sentinel's story does, but for me, a game like this, I'm going to play through once, experience the story, and enjoy it, and it is very unlikely that I will ever touch it again. So, important to know, if you're interested in this game, I cannot recommend it enough. If you're cautious, you have to jump through some hoops, but there is a free demo you can try in the Japanese eShop. Try it out there. And if you're someone who played the heck out of this game, don't feel like you have to buy this. There's nothing exclusive that you're missing out that's pivotal to the game. There's no extra story. This is a fantastic port that is really mostly aimed for newcomers, less so people who are going to be double dipping. If you're double dipping on this game, you're either a huge supporter of it and just want to make sure that this game hopefully sells better in the West than the original PS4 release did, or just someone who really wants to play this again on the Switch. And like I said, the Switch version is fantastic. It looks great in handheld, it runs great on docked, very, very few issues with the game, and any technical issues I saw were also technical issues on the PS4 slash PS5 version. So Vanillaware knocked it out of the park with this port. I'm really glad this is here. I, if anything, would say I hope that this game now comes to PC next. I think this is just one of those games that you can put out on everything and would be fantastic. But even if this was out on every console, I 100% can stand behind the fact that 13 Sentinels is best played on the Nintendo Switch, hands down. Let me know what you think of this, hopefully a little bit shorter review. Thank you once again to Atlas West and Sega for supplying me with a review code for this game. If you have any questions I didn't cover about this, because this is more of a quick opinion slash thoughts and stuff like that, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions I didn't cover in this video. And uh, let me know if you're picking up the game. Are you going physical, digital? Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you later.